Start by selecting the airplane model you like to build and the best scale for your collection, which is subject to your preferences and available display space. For this tutorial, I have selected the North American F86A Sabre in 172 scale. It is best to devote a workbench to your hobby, an area where you can exclusively keep all your building tools, rulers, tape, paint, spray cans, brushes, and other equipment neat and organized. A magnifying glass is a great addition to your workbench. It will allow you to paint small parts and add meticulous detail to your model. This is one of the most exciting steps of the whole construction process. Carefully open the box and analyze the plastic parts attached to the spruces. Notice that every part is identified by a number. Look at the set of decals and decide on the specific markings and color schemes for your model. Read the instructions and study the sequence of steps. They are not written on a stone. Sometimes you may need to modify them a little. It is very important to clean the plastic parts in a mix of water and mild soap to remove any residue of oil from the mold used to make the parts. This process will help the paint to adhere better to the surface of the plastic. Remove as much water from the plastic parts and let them dry on top of a paper towel. It is a good idea to look for photographic references of the model you are planning to build to help you improve the details and even help you customize the model to a specific squadron, aeroforce or model variant. Search books and aviation magazines postcards, and if possible, visit a local aviation museum. There is one more thing you must do before starting to build your model. Read the color chart listed on the instructions or the model box and gather all the paint required. Before you start painting, lay down paper, a drop cloth, or a piece of plastic to help protect your furniture. Review and follow the instructions to paint the small parts while they are still attached to the sprue. Use a number zero brush and a small amounts of paint. We will start painting the landing gear components using silver enamel paint.
use a magnifying glass to see better when painting some of the small parts. The magnifying glass will allow you to add additional detail to your model. Paint using one color at a time and thoroughly clean the brush using brush thinner before using a different color. Be sure to use the thinner in a well-ventilated area. Thinner is flammable and volatile. Now we continue painting the small parts using a different color. Having the small parts still attached to the sprue makes it easy to handle them. Make sure you do not touch the freshly painted parts to avoid fingerprints. We proceed to paint the internal cockpit components. Using the same color, we paint the wheels. We have painted the ejection seat, the pilot, the wheels, and the inside of the airplane nose. We have also painted the inside part of the landing gear wheel pans and the air brakes. We are now ready to start assembling the model. Use a hobby knife or a pair of wire cutters to free the airplane parts. To avoid damaging the parts, do not break them apart from the sprue. Use a hobby knife or fine sandpaper to remove any leftover plastic from the parts. Be careful when handling the hobby knife. Before gluing parts together, make sure you remove the paint from the areas you will apply the glue. Use a hobby knife or sandpaper to remove the paint. Plastic will bond together better without any paint residue interfering. When using glue package in a squeeze tube, use a plastic glue tip to help apply the glue in small quantities. Start by squeezing a small amount of glue on a paper towel to fill up the plastic glue tip. Apply the glue to the plastic parts and hold them together, applying a little pressure for a few seconds.
Before gluing together the fuselage, we need to paint the interior part of the single seat cockpit. Only paint the parts that will be visible from the outside. Proceed to remove the fuselage from the sprue. Use a hobby knife or a pair of wire cutters to free the parts. Be careful not to damage the fuselage when cutting. After removing the two fuselage halves from the sprue, sand the edges to get them ready for gluing. Review the instructions and determine which other parts you need. Apply glue in the interior of one of the fuselage halves to install the engine component. Remember to use small amounts of glue. Proceed to apply glue in the front area of the fuselage to install the cockpit configuration, which includes the ejection seat, the instrument panel and the pilot. To glue large parts like the fuselage halves, it's best to use liquid plastic cement. This type of glue dries faster. Apply the glue all around the edges of the fuselage. Join the two fuselage halves, making sure the cockpit configuration fits properly in place. Use small pieces of masking tape to keep the two fuselage halves together while the glue dries. Use a hobby knife or a pair of wire cutters to separate the wings from the sprue. Use liquid plastic cement to glue the two wings halves together. Apply the liquid cement in small quantities. Hold the wing halves together, applying some pressure. Repeat the same procedure with the other wing. Assemble the tail configuration following the instructions. Make sure the components are aligned having the same angle between the vertical tail rudder and the horizontal elevators. Follow the instructions to attach the wings to the fuselage. Apply the liquid cement in small quantities to one side of the fuselage at a time. Insert the wing in the slot and hold it in place, applying some pressure. The liquid cement 
will dry quickly. Follow the same procedure with the other wing. Now it is time to get your model ready for painting. The model will have a metallic finish, which has the characteristic of easily showing surface imperfections. It is very important to conceal any imperfections by sanding your model especially on the plastic seams and joints. Start by using a sandpaper with a low grit number and transition to a higher grit sandpaper to even out and polish the surface. The higher the grit number, the smoother the paper and the finer the finish results. Use the sanding paper in a circular motion and do not apply a lot of pressure. Be gentle. When sanding, be careful not to erase the panel lines and the molded detail on the model. Use masking tape to cover the areas of the model you don't want painted. We can hand paint the model with a brush, or we can select the better option of using an airbrush. The airbrush will give you an even finish. Use a head assembly with the smallest opening for extra fine detailing. The best airbrushing results are achieved by a good constant motion. If the motion is uneven, the paint finish will be uneven. Start the motion before pressing the airbrush trigger. Follow through with the motion after releasing the trigger. To prevent paint runs and sags, do not hold the airbrush still or move it too slowly and maintain a distance of at least 3 inches from the model. Use a well sharpened number 2 pencil to carefully draw over the indented panel lines of your model. This technique will improve the contrast and help the panel lines be more visible, especially on airplanes with a metallic finish. Using the eraser from a pencil, you can achieve excellent weathering effects, especially on airplanes with a metallic finish. Use the eraser to change the brightness of the surface panels, as it happens in real life.
After painting, gluing, and detailing small parts like the landing gear, carefully attach them to the airplane using small amounts of glue. Use sharp scissors to carefully cut out each decal from the master sheet and set them aside on your working table. Do not cut the small clear film surrounding each design. If you apply a layer of clear gloss on a flat finished airplane, the clear film will blend in. Most decals are water activated. They are very fragile and very easy to damage, especially if you do not handle them carefully. Dip the decal in water for about 15 to 25 seconds. This time will be in most cases enough to let the adhesive release from the backing paper. While you wait, using a small brush, apply the decal setting solution to the surface of your model. The decal setting solution will help the decal adhere to the surface of the model better. To make sure the decal is ready, try to slide it with the point of your finger from the backing paper. It should slide easily. Apply the decal to your model using a small brush or the tip of your finger. Apply setting solution on top of the decal with a small brush. Use a piece of tissue to help remove the excess water and setting solution from the area around the decal. Clean the thin milky fluid residue around the decal using the piece of tissue. Apply several coats of setting solution to get the decal adhere properly to the surface detail. Look at your model with a critical eye from different angles and see what techniques you can improve next time. Compare your model with the reference pictures and see what detail you can add to make it look more realistic. Compare your model with models built by other hobbyists and share knowledge, hints, tips and techniques. Your skills will definitely improve and your models will keep getting better and better. Sometimes you want to add a special touch to your model, improve on a feature, or maybe you want your model to have insignias from a different country. In this example, we display the air brakes in an open configuration. You are done. You finished your first model. Now it is time to start thinking 
about the next model you want to build. Maybe you want to build the same model again with different insignias to try new techniques and practice your skills. Welcome to the hobby of building plastic model airplanes. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to build your model. If it is 10, 20, 50, and 100 or even a thousand hours, this is a relaxing, entertaining, fascinating, and rewarding hobby.